the 15th of September, in Uber corporate offices, a message was received on their internal Slack server. The message reads as follows. Hi, I announce I am a hacker, and Uber has suffered a data breach. Slack has been stolen, confidential data with Confluence, Stash and two Mono repos from Fabricator have also been stolen along with secrets from sneakers. This was the Slack message that had been sent to everybody on Uber's corporate Slack server. Many employees reacting to it thinking it's a joke, but it's not. A hacker has penetrated Uber's corporate network and has taken control of several services. The Uber security team started to look at which of their systems was compromised and to regain control of them. Next to the Slack server and the claims made in the message, the hacker gained access to Uber's AWS management console, VMware ESXi virtual machines and Google Workspace dashboard. How much access the hacker had to the systems is unclear to Uber at the time, but if so much was really compromised, it was a large breach, maybe even the largest breach that Uber had experienced. Three hours after the initial Slack message, Uber sends a tweet at 3.25 a.m. reading, We are currently responding to a cybersecurity incident. We are in touch with law enforcement and will post additional updates here as they become available. It's at this moment that the public finds out that Uber has been breached. The first questions by the public are if their account and credit cards are safe. At this time, Uber doesn't know yet. An hour after the announcement, cybersecurity researchers on Twitter posted that they received information that certain systems in Uber were completely compromised by the hacker. The hacker attempts to prove this by showing screenshots of the AWS administration consoles, Slack administration panel, and Uber financial data to the security researchers on Twitter. While Uber is reacting to the breach, the hacker is taunting the Uber staff by leaving public messages on the Uber account of HackerOne, a bug bounty platform. The hacker posts that Uber is hacked and brags about how much access they have to Uber systems. If the claims that the hacker made are true, then they have full control over many internal systems within the Uber network. This does not mean that the hacker has free reign in the systems, but it does mean that they could wreak havoc within the systems they have control over. Uber staff is working hard at this time to log out the hacker from all services that are compromised and to ensure that the hacker does not regain control. Meanwhile on Twitter, security researchers and the New York Times are continuing communications with the alleged hacker. The hacker has identified himself with the name Teapot and says they are 18 years old. After providing screenshots of what seemed to be hacked services inside the Uber network, the researchers asked the hacker how the Uber network was compromised. The hacker explains they compromised an Uber account using a phishing attack. In a phishing attack, a victim is tricked by the attacker to click on a link or to open a file. When the victim clicks on the link, a program is executed that steals credentials and other information and sends it to the attacker. This allowed the hacker to attempt to log into the Uber services. Multi-factor authentication is used to protect against attacks like this. This is required on all properly secured corporate networks. Uber had multi-factor implemented. So how did the hacker bypass it? On Twitter, the hacker says they bypassed multi-factor authentication by sending authentication requests for an hour to the victim. After that, the hacker contacted the victim, pretending to be Uber IT and convincing the victim to accept the two-factor authentication request. After that, the attacker changed the multi-factor authentication device to his own. From that moment, the attacker had access to the Uber corporate VPN and he could start scanning the internal network. Once inside, the hacker found an SME network share. This network share contained several PowerShell scripts that were used to perform various administration functions. One of these PowerShell scripts contained a username and password for an admin user in the privileged access management of the Uber network. This software controls the keys to get elevated privileges within the Uber network. Using the access to the privilege management system, the hacker was able to obtain the secrets for all services running in the Uber network. 
domain admin, dual two-factor authentication services, one login, AWS, and G Suite. Uber security staff works all night to identify the access the hacker has and to restrict access. The following morning, on September 16th, 10.30 a.m., a follow-up message is posted on Uber security blog. While our investigation and response efforts are ongoing, here's a further update on yesterday's incident. We have no evidence that the incident evolved access to sensitive user data like trip history. All our services, including Uber, Uber Eats, Uber Freight and the Uber Driver app, are operational. As we shared yesterday, we have notified law enforcement. Internal software tools that we took down as a precaution yesterday are coming back online this morning. During the weekend, the Uber security team was working diligently on securing their systems and figuring out exactly how the hacker attacked and took over their systems. While this was happening, another story was developing. This time, at Rockstar Games. On the 18th of September 2022, a user named Teapot Uber Hacker posted a message with a RAR archive on a GTA fan site. Hi, here are 90 footage clips from GTA 6. It's possible I could leak more data soon. GTA 5 and 6 source code and assets GTA 6 testing build. Rockstar Games is a developer of Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto, otherwise known as GTA, is one of the most valuable game franchises and at the time GTA 5 was the most expensive game ever developed. The unannounced follow-up in the highly anticipated series was in development at the time at Rockstar Games. The archive that was posted on the fan site contained 90 videos of development footage of GTA 6, the unannounced sequel. In the gaming world, it's relatively common that fake images or videos get made claiming to be a highly anticipated game. The authenticity of the videos was confirmed later that day when Take-2, the publisher of GTA, started to issue DMCA takedown notices to remove the videos from websites. In a message the hacker posted on the GTA forums, they claim to be the same person who hacked Uber. The hacker claims to have gained access to the Rockstar Slack server and Confluence server and downloaded all the videos they could find. The hacker also downloaded at least parts of the GTA 5 and 6 source code. The hacker proves at least part of this claim by providing a source code file containing 9500 lines of code that seem to be related to the scripting language of GTA. The hacker then tried to sell the GTA 5 source code via Telegram. An offer was given to Rockstar to contact him to prevent the source code from being sold to others. The hacker said that the source code would not be sold under a 5 figure amount. The hacker claimed they got in by joining a Slack server and used by Rockstar, but that did not require authentication. The hacker then social engineered access to the Rockstar corporate Slack from some Rockstar employees. At this time, Rockstar has not yet released any information on how the hacker occurred and what the hacker did in the network, so we can't confirm that the hacker got into the network in the way that he said. Early in the morning, on the 19th of September 2022, Rockstar publicly stated that they had a data breach. The statement reads as follows. We recently suffered a network intrusion in which an unauthorized third party illegally accessed and downloaded confidential information from our systems, including early development footage for Grand Theft Auto. At this time, we do not anticipate any disruption to our live game services nor any long-term effect on the development of our ongoing projects. That same morning, Uber released their analysis on how the hacker gained access to their network and what they were able to access. The hackers were able to compromise an account of a contractor of Uber. This was then used to access the Uber network. From there, the hacker accessed other employee accounts which gave them elevated privileges to a number of tools, including G Suite and Slack. The hacker then reconfigured the DNS server that provides internal domain names and defaced some of Uber's internal sites. Uber reacted to the breach by ensuring the hacker had no longer access to the systems and checked if the user data was secure and Uber services were not affected. Uber then proceeded to investigate the impact of the incident. Uber says that the hacker did not access any production systems. This includes systems where personal information is processed. Furthermore, Uber states that sensitive information such as credit card information is stored encrypted and was not accessed by the hacker. And they do not see that the hacker changed any of the source code of the Uber app. With the access that the hacker obtained, they were able to access the hacker one account of Uber. 
This allowed the attacker to download bug bounty reports that were submitted by security researchers. This could give the attacker an insight into possible security issues that Uber had. Uber says that the issues presented in the security reports were already remediated by Uber prior to the hack. In the security report, Uber also does an attempt at identifying the hacker's origin. Is it a loner in an attic, a cybercrime group or a state actor? Uber believes that the hacker is affiliated with a hacking group called Lapsus. At this time, Uber makes the claim that Rockstar might have been hacked by the same group. Since Uber mentioned the name Lapsus, it begs the question, who is Lapsus? Lapsus is a hacker group that has been in news a lot during 2022. Lapsus is known for using extortion and destruction without deploying ransomware. Unlike most hacking groups that want to stay under the radar, Lapsus seems to want the opposite, going as far as announcing hacks on their Telegram channel and other social media or advertising their intent to buy credentials to organizations that they want to hack. Since the end of 2021, Lapsus has been breaking into large corporate networks, stealing their intellectual property and threatening to release it to the public unless a payment is made. Their tactics focus on social engineering or buying the credentials to obtain access to corporate accounts. When they obtain access, they try to bypass the multi-factor authentication. Upon gaining access to the internal network, easily detectable tools are used to find other credentials to gain further access in the network. Inside the network, Lapsus Group searches and downloads intellectual property or source code and where possible tries to delete files after downloading them. The first large breach of lapses that we know of was the Brazilian Ministry of Health in 2021, where they deleted more than 50 terabytes of data. Because of the breach, the Ministry of Health postponed plans to implement new health requirements for travelers and the digitization of the healthcare system. On the 21st of January 2022, Okta was breached by lapses. Okta is an authentication provider that is used globally by thousands of organizations. The breach was through a compromised account of a third-party support engineer. The response team noted that during the breach, the compromised thin client was used to search Google for well-known hacking tools such as Mimikatz. If the attackers had not disabled some security features in the network, these tools would have easily been caught by network administrators. The attack on Okta had limited effect and only 366 customers were impacted by the breach out of the thousands of customers that Okta manages. About a month later, on the 23rd of February, NVIDIA became Lapsus' next victim. Lapsus claims to have downloaded a terabyte of data from NVIDIA and threatened to release the complete silicon, graphics and computer chipset files for all recent GPUs including the 3090 Ti and upcoming revisions. If NVIDIA didn't open source their GPU drivers. To enforce that threat, Lapsus released a 20GB archive and 70,000 employee password hashes on the 3rd of March. In May 2022, NVIDIA announced that they would open source the GPU kernel modules for Linux. There is no indication that the lapsus threat caused NVIDIA to open source their drivers. On the 4th of March, lapsus posted a 190GB torrent that contained internal data from Samsung. The torrent contained the source code to the Galaxy lines of phones, among other things. 
After three days, Samsung reported that they were breached and that no personal identifiable information from their employees nor their contractors was leaked. Samsung nor Lapsus released any further information on how Samsung corporate network was breached and how the source code was obtained. Only days later, on the 8th of March, Mercado Libre, the largest Argentinian e-commerce company, confirmed it had been breached and its source code and user data for over 300,000 customers had been accessed by Lapsus. Mercado Libre says no passwords and financial information was accessed. The hacker group claimed to have accessed and downloaded over 24,000 source code repositories of Mercado Libre and Mercado Paco, a subsidiary of Mercado Libre. No further information was released by Mercado Libre on how the network was compromised. Again, two days later, on the 10th of March, Ubisoft, a large game publisher, released information it had experienced a disruption to its services. In the statement that was published, they said they were working to investigate the issue together with leading external experts. They performed a company-wide password reset out of precaution and stated to the public that there was no indication that user data was compromised. Lapsus insinuated responsibility for the disruption by reacting on the Telegram channel to the story on The Verge with a smiley. Only seven days later, another breach. This time it was T-Mobile. They gained access to a tool named Atlas, an internal tool for managing customer accounts. This could be used to change and create phone subscriptions for customers of T-Mobile. Inside the group, there are at times arguments if the tool should be used to try to go after government accounts, since it could bring a lot of heat upon them and it could limit the access they had to the tool, which could also be used for SIM swapping attacks. Lapsus also gained access to the source code repositories of T-Mobile and downloaded all 30,000 projects that were stored there. Shortly after the T-Mobile hack, a server that was rented by one of the members of Lapsus on AWS was seized by the FBI. The seizure of the server was talked about in a private Telegram channel of the Lapsus group. The owner of the server warned other members of the group that the server contained a lot of illegal data and it was used as a storage location for stolen software and source code. On the 20th of March, Lapsus posted a screenshot of the Microsoft Azure DevOps server to the Telegram channel. The following day, the group released a 37 GB file on the Telegram channel. In the file was 90% of the source code of the Bing search engine and about 45% of the source code of Bing Maps and the voice activated personal assistant Cortana. The leak also contained emails and documentation for several projects. Microsoft shut down the transfer before it could finish. They could do this because the Lapsus group posted about the Microsoft breach before the download had completed. In an official statement, Microsoft said that no customer data was accessed. They also stated that a single account was compromised and that Microsoft does not rely on secrecy of code as a security precaution. On March 24, the police of the City of London stated that they arrested seven individuals connected to the Lapsus group. A minor arrested in Oxford is believed to be one of the leaders of the gang. A 16-year-old and a 17-year-old were charged with three counts of unauthorized access to a computer with the intent to impair the reliability of data. One count of fraud by false representation and one count of unauthorized access to a computer with the intent to hinder access to data. The 16-year-old was also charged with causing a computer to perform a function to secure unauthorized access to a program. The suspects were later released under bail after a special hearing in court. The bail release was subject to certain conditions. What those special conditions were is unknown. On the Telegram channel of Lapsus, a message was posted that some members were on vacation but would return on the 30th of March. On March 30th, Globant was breached. Globant is a Luxembourg-based software company. Lapsus obtained 70 GB worth of client data and source code. Some folders in a release screenshot contained the names Abbott, Apple Health App, C-SPAN, Fortune, Facebook, DHL, and ArcSurf. In a post on their Telegram channel, Lapsus claimed to also have possession of several administration accounts to certain services such as GitHub. Globant did not reveal how the hackers obtained access to the service. 
At the beginning of this timeline, we ask the question, what is Lapsus? We can now clearly see that Lapsus is a cybercrime group that focuses on theft and extortion and is made out of young people ranging from the age of 16 to 21 years old. We can also see that Lapsus uses simple tools and seems to be focused on social engineering as a primary way of obtaining access to networks. This concludes our timeline. Well, there is one more thing. On September 22nd, mere days after the breaches, there was an arrest in relation to the Rockstar and Uberhack. The arrested person is a 70-year-old British teen. The teen is being charged with breaching three computer networks. You might wonder, how did the police track down this teen so fast? It was one of the people that was arrested half a year earlier and released on a bail under special circumstances. This is where we end our story, for now. The unknown teen remains in jail, awaiting its trial.